Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Plodgen, thank you again for being here. Uh, you mentioned in your testimony uh, that uh, the changes you've been able to secure thanks to congressional input. Could you provide more details on uh, the issues that Treasury has negotiated that will benefit the United States? Thank you, Ranking Member Thompson. Um, yes, happy to. Uh, protecting U.S. interests has been a consistent priority uh, for the multiple administrations that have been involved in these negotiations. Uh, and the Pillar 2 model rules and interpretive guidance reflect that. Um, I can't speak to every decision that's been made, uh, but a, a few examples I, I think will we'll paint the picture. Uh, many U.S., uh, important U.S. provisions, including accelerated depreciation, are specifically identified in the model rules as book tax differences that do not give rise uh, to adjustments to the effective tax rate and do not give rise to top-up tax under Pillar 2. Uh, Treasury negotiators have also been able to secure a guilty coordination rule that reduces um, the burden for U.S. businesses in allocating taxes paid uh, under guilty uh, for purposes of Pillar 2. Uh, on Monday, there was also guidance that was released that uh, provides for a safe harbor on the UTPR uh, that provides temporary taxpayer relief uh, and time to resolve outstanding issues uh, in the application of the UTPR uh, to parent jurisdictions. I also want to highlight the, the guidance on uh, the treatment of credits. Um, so credits through uh, tax equity partnerships uh, structures that are commonly used in the low-income housing tax credit uh, context, as well as for certain green energy credits, uh, have also been protected under administrative guidance. Um, Monday's guidance also, as I mentioned, protects the value of transferable credits um, like those enacted under the Inflation Reduction Act uh, by treating them appropriately as refundable tax credits. I mean, I think that administrative guidance uh, really demonstrates that the U.S. should remain at the table uh, as the world moves forward and implements Pillar 2. Thank you. I think the transferable credits uh, provision uh, speaks loudly about the importance of us uh, being at that table. I, I appreciate that. Uh, it seems to me that your recent accomplishments are proof of the importance of remaining at that table. Uh, one thing's really clear to me, and that's that the OECD is going to forge ahead. And the United States can't just put our head in the sand and pretend that it isn't, uh, as some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle seem to think that we should be doing. So I'm glad that notwithstanding some uh, resistance from my colleagues on the other side, the Biden administration, Secretary Yellen, and you have been steadfast in your commitment to representing the United States at the OECD. Appreciate that, and I want you to know that you have the full support of folks on my side of the aisle. Um, a lot's been said about the JCT uh, revenue estimates. It seems to me that estimating the revenue effects of adopting or not adopting Pillar 2 is an extremely difficult exercise, even for the most qualified economists at JCT. In your opinion, what should we take away from these estimates that we've seen? I think that's a, a really important uh, issue, uh, and I think there are several uh, things to keep in mind when reviewing the, the JCT revenue estimates. Uh, first is the modified baseline that, that JCT uses. Uh, the JCT analysis says that if the 40-plus jurisdictions that have announced plans to implement Pillar 2 do in fact adopt Pillar 2 and the U.S. does nothing, uh, then the impact of Pillar 2 on U.S. revenues could vary by $400 billion, depending on their assumptions on profit shifting. Um, if you just look at the midpoint of that range, uh, what they're saying is that Pillar 2 adoption by those 40-plus jurisdictions and no action by the U.S. Uh, is an increase in U.S. tax receipts of $25 billion. In addition, I think it's important to note that in every scenario that the JCT analyzed, U.S. adoption of Pillar 2 increases U.S. tax receipts as compared to uh, inaction by the U.S. Uh, for instance, Scenario 5, which shows U.S. adoption of Pillar 2 and adoption by those 40 baseline countries, would increase U.S. revenue by $236.5 billion. Uh, so overall, the, the takeaway is if other major members of the global economy are moving ahead, and they are moving ahead to implement Pillar 2, uh, it's better from a revenue perspective for the U.S. to take action than to remain on the sidelines. Thank you very much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 